here we are. Conference Championship Weekend is now over. We do know who will be going to the college football playoff. Yes, we know. At the end of the night, everything has settled. We know who's going. We know who's not going. We got some other things as well, you know, happening. You know, not just you know with these championship games, but other things happening in college football as well. First things first, let's get some of this other stuff out the way. Joe Moorhead he became the head coach of Akron. That's baffling to me. I, I don't know. I don't know how. I, I really don't know how. Whatever, man. Um, we'll talk about Oregon in a moment here as we get to the Friday games. But there's an extra bowl game this year. So Hawaii gets to play in a bowl. We don't have to worry. My UNC Mean Green, as you can see, I'm ripping a, a Mean Green shirt You know, here. We don't have to sweat it out. So all 83 bowl eligible teams plus Hawaii get to play a bowl game. I believe that bowl game will be in Frisco. So it is what it is there. Um... So Marcus Freeman, he's now Notre Dame's head coach. Um, Adrian Martinez, he's gone from Nebraska. He said, I'm out. I'm tired of playing with this Nebraska team. He's going to the transfer portal. And then Bronco Mendenhall resigns for Virginia. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. We, we're just getting started. You know, Quinn, Quinn Ears, however you say his last name, he's transferring as well. You know, I mean, things are getting crazy when it comes to the transfer portal, when it comes to these coaching changes. The, the grind never stops, I tell you what, I tell you what. <laughs> but the biggest thing, the biggest thing, which is what I'm most happy about here, is that the college football playoff, the committee, you know, the, com you know, the committee of expansion, you know, the committee that's supposed to handle the expansion of these commissioners and 80s and stuff like that they're still indecisive on you know either an 8 team or a 12 team playoff need of which I'm in favor of because I just don't think there's 8 or 12 teams deserving you know that are the best that are the most deserving there's, there's not 8 teams there's not 12 teams deserving or best in college football I'm sorry it just is what it is you know, you, you, you can say that there's snubs. There have been snubs in the four-team system. You know, Baylor, not TCU, 2014. Baylor, not TCU. Baylor, because Baylor beat TCU. So TCU fans can shut up. And then um, 2018 Ohio State. It was like 20, yeah, it was 2018 Ohio State. That's the only other snub that I can think of. But everything else, you know, has been right. So everything else pretty much goes well. I mean, it is what it is. So... You, know, you you could argue, you know, there there are some teams that did not deserve it, but I mean, hey, it is what it is. We have our four. So when we get into these um, games, these conference championships, you know, still waiting on the FCS playoffs um, to finish up the second round, so that's why we're recording this first. So on Friday, we had U UTSA and Western Kentucky with the Roadrunners since then, McCormick had 200 yards, three TDs. I mean, this was a thriller. Bailey Zapp had 500 yards passing. This was this was a game in which the Hilltoppers almost came back from you know being down, you know, a lot. They were down a lot, and you know it it became a thriller that went down to the final play. Just insanity. Both these teams will be going bowling again. They'll probably be bowling on the first couple days of bowling, probably that first bowl Saturday. We don't know where because, again, the Conference USA isn't really, you know, they don't really like to sit their number one, their their conference champion anywhere. They could, The conference champion can just pick and choose. So likely it'll be the Independence Bowl for UTSA, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see tomorrow. The other game on Friday night, unfortunately, was Oregon and Utah, and unfortunately, Anthony Brown struggled again, proving that he was not, proving that he's on the same level as Sean Clifford and Bo Nix and Graham Mertz, you know, those types of guys. Trash. Not good. He threw a pick six. Oregon got dominated again with the arm of Cam Rising, with the running of his, 
you know, Cam Rising can run, he can throw. Yeah, I mean, this was just masterful. Tavion Thomas also got two touchdowns. And despite, you know, Mario Cristobal getting that extension, it didn't help Oregon here. It didn't help. They got throttled for a second time by Utah. And Utah will be going to the Rose Bowl for the first time ever, likely taking on Ohio State. Actually, it's probably confirmed at this point that they'll be taking on Ohio State. So, yeah. Gonna be an interesting one. We'll talk about all those bowl matchups when we get closer to them. Um, but then we go to Saturday. I, I have no words for what this Baylor-Oklahoma State game was. Blake Shapin played absolutely magnificent. He, had, he was 17 for 17 at one point. Had three touchdowns. There was some ticky-tacky plays, you know, by the refs that were called in this game, including a, you know, like some intentional groundings, a pass that what that could have been, you know, I don't know if it was a forward pass or if it wasn't, you know, it is what it is. It, it was just ugly. It's it's not like Baylor was a perfect. It's not like Baylor had a perfect game or anything. They definitely were dominating in the first half, but they missed a couple field goals. They fumbled the ball twice, you know. Oklahoma State's defense was able to keep them in this game. But when Spencer Sanders throws four bad interceptions, no Jalen Warren, he got I believe he got injured or something like that. So the run game couldn't help out. Run game didn't for Oklahoma State. And then the, and then the Cowboys had decided to fail two times inside the goal line, including the game clinching play. The game clinching play in which Baylor was able to keep Oklahoma State out of the end zone by mere inches and thus Oklahoma State probably might be the catalyst for causing CFP expansion if it does which it probably will we just don't know if or when you know yet so Oklahoma State good job you did it again you're gonna cause the college football playoff to expand <laughs> my goodness so Baylor is going to the Sugar Bowl and it looks like Ole Miss will be their opponent now you know, because of what happens later on in the day, but we'll talk about that when we get to that point. Oklahoma State, you guys are still going to a New Year Six Bowl. That's good, but you should have won this game. You didn't. It's a damn shame that you didn't. Kent State, Northern Illinois. Now these two teams played in a barn burner earlier this season. Second time around though, Rocky Lombardi, he was able to play, ran for three touchdowns. Defense picked off Dustin Crum for a pick six. And I mean, NIU took care of the Golden Flashes. The Huskies are going bowling somewhere. Again, the MAC also is kind of weird with their bowl tie in, so we don't know where NIU or Kent State will be going. They'll probably both be playing on that first bowl Saturday as well. It, it is what it is. So, you know. so we move into the later games. The three Eastern games, and then the Mountain West Championship. Oh my goodness. I think we all saw this coming. I think a lot I think a lot of people saw this coming. You know, Utah State came in with a lot of momentum on their side. Look at Bonner. Four touchdowns. The punt came. Matt Erasia, he got, he, got he got a punt blocked this game. Utah State blows out San Diego State. They're going to the Los Angeles Bowl as the Mountain West Champions. For the first time, congrats to you. My goodness, what a performance. They shut down San Diego State as we all knew that San Diego State's offense was not that great. And it really showed it today. Utah State was very explosive. Did way more than enough. And they'll be taking on a Pac-12 team likely either Oregon State or Washington State. Either one of those, you know, that's what the projections have said. For the Aggies. App State, Louisiana. Round two. Yeah, a lot of round twos. I don't know why there's a lot of round twos, but we got a round two for this game as well. You know, Western Kentucky. Um, UTSA was also a round two, which I forgot to mention the first time. Um, but this App State, Louisiana game was more defensive. However, Louisiana's defense was just too much. Amadi Bailey ran for 117 at the TD. Levi Lewis had 210 passing. Billy Napier is going to go out a winner. He's going to go out a winner. And I mean, Louisiana finally, 
finally gets the Sun Belt Championship. They were denied their chance at Coastal Carolina last year. They finally get to hoist that trophy up. You know, Chase Bryce was contained in this game. He threw for only 119 passing yards, which is not going to get it done. 12 for, what, 30? 12 for 30? That's not going to get it done. Louisiana sacked them three times. And now both teams are going to be awaiting their bowl fates. Both these teams are probably also going to be playing on that first bowl Saturday. So, again, good good times when you're a group of five team on that first bowl Saturday. So, uh, again, the first bowl Saturday, the first Saturday of bowl season is the best time of the year. You know, in, my, in one of my opinion, one of the best times of the year. You know, once we get past you know a lot of things. So, the, so these two teams, two damn good teams, they're both going to be playing. So we'll be looking at this Louisiana team again, whatever, wherever they're going. They're likely going to the New Orleans Bowl, Louisiana is. It's 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 pretty much, you know, fact at this point, the Sun Belt champion usually goes to the New Orleans Bowl, so we'll see. Georgia, Alabama, this one was big. Alabama needed to win this game to stay in the race for the college football playoff. And what did they do? They blew out Georgia. They basically blew him out. Bryce Young basically <laughs> cemented himself. He's he's probably going, He's, he's it's either going to be him or, or somebody else that we'll talk about. He's going to be winning this Heisman Trophy. Because he threw for TD, threw for three touchdowns, ran for another. Yeah, he and Jameson Williams hooked up for two of those touchdowns, including a, an absolute bomb. I mean, these Georgia DBs got outran. Like, there were two Georgia DBs, you know, side by side on Jameson Williams. Could catch him. Could not catch him. The Dogs D-line never could get to, to Bryce Young. Couldn't get to him. And Stetson Bennett, he struggled. He looked, he looked like the George quarterback that we were supposed to see all season. You know, not great. Throwing a pick six, you know, throwing, th what, three interceptions in this game? Just just not a good performance by Georgia. And now, now people are going to question, should Georgia even get in? It's likely that they still get in. Alabama didn't blow them out by enough. You know, and Georgia, again, they had 12 straight dominant wins before this so I know a lot of people are starting to argue you know Baylor or Notre Dame or Georgia but it's pretty much clear cut at this point it should be Georgia now where, where where's Georgia going to be placed and that brings us to the next team here oh yes number four Cincinnati they barely had the ball this game against Houston in the AAC championship now the AAC championship usually is the best game the best conference championship game as it has been for several years now you know just a bunch of thrillers I mean you go back to those Memphis UCF games you go back to the um, you back you go back to when Temple won it I mean usually just the most entertaining conference championship by far but not this time not this time not this time but when when since he had the ball when it mattered Desmond Ritter Jerome Ford, Jerome Ford especially with those two monster touchdowns. I mean, five touchdowns for Cincinnati, and I mean it was a it was only fourteen to thirteen at half. And then once, once, once those touchdowns started rolling, rolling, rolling off the board for Cincinnati. Once they started scoring, once they picked off Clayton Tune as well, they started rolling and rumbling. And beaten up on the Cougars, you know. I mean, it was not even close after that. Once it was 35-13, I turned this off. I went over to the SWAC Championship, which we'll talk about that in like 30 minutes or so. And I mean, come on, Cincinnati, they are in the first group of five team to go to the college football playoff. Where are they going to be placed, though? A lot of people are probably going to keep them at four. I think the CFP committee probably will keep them at number four. It, it's unfortunate, but, I mean, they got to try and avoid a Alabama-Georgia rematch for now, you know, if unless things go, you know, the way things go and we see, you know, new teams in the college football playoff final in the national championship. So, 
we'll, we'll, we'll find out. But we'll find out where Cincinnati's place. We'll find out where Cincinnati goes tomorrow morning. It's it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Michigan, oh Michigan, you didn't have to do Iowa like that. They dominated Iowa. Aiden Hutchinson and crew, they they couldn't. They they. I mean this. This Iowa team was just outmatched from the start. The Hawkeyes never got the momentum that they could in the red zone. They missed a 33-yard field goal. How do you miss that? You're not supposed to miss a field goal from 33 yards. But here we are, college kickers, being college kickers. Iowa's play calling. I don't know what Kirk Ferentz has, you know. if Harbaugh has to, if Harbaugh has to evolve his play calling, you know, in a way that you know he, he can get more dynamic players and stuff like that on offense, then surely Iowa should be doing the same things, and they just aren't. It just did not happen that way for Iowa. Like they were wasting time, wasting so much time when they didn't need to be wasting time. Just they failed on fourth down when they probably should have just kicked the field goal. I mean, this was just a horrible performance by the Hawkeyes. Now you're stuck going to, what, the Outback Bowl? Or maybe the Citrus Bowl? You're going somewhere in Florida. Just, just where? You're going to Tampa? You're going to, what, you're going to Jacksonville? You're going to Orlando? Where are you going, Iowa? Where are you going? Because I know where Michigan's going. They're going to the college football playoff. They're going to the playoff. Second new team in the CFP. We could have had three, but thanks, Oklahoma State. So Michigan in, Cincinnati in, Alabama confirmed to be in, Georgia probably in, but we'll see again. We'll see what the committee says. Now there, there again. There's just some things about Georgia that you know they don't have. They don't have a lot of good wins anymore. So yeah, that's yeah, that's also gonna, that's also going to weigh on their mind. And last but not least. Wake Forest and Pitt. The ACC Championship, we expected a barn burner. We did not get a barn burner. We got Pitt's defense. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Pitt's defense. Who boy. Sam Hartman threw four terrible interceptions. One of them got returned for pick six. Can he pick it? With a huge TD run early in this game, in which he just faked out the entire Wake Forest defense. You know, I mean... Abani Kanda also got two touchdowns in this game. You know, I think Jordan Addison also got injured. I'm, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, you know there there were some wide receiver injuries. I know John, I know John Matchy also got injured. He tore his ACL, unfortunately. Um, but moving on, moving back to Wake Forest Pitt in the ACC championship. My goodness, Pitt, you didn't have to do that to him. You did it. Two blowouts to end championship Saturday. It's rather unfortunate that we had to see four blowouts in these. Actually, five. We saw five blowouts. So we actually we saw more than we saw a lot of blowouts. Yeah, a lot of these conference championship games were blowouts. I don't know why. I don't know why. But it is what it is. Obviously, best game of the day was Baylor, Oklahoma State, by far. If you love defense like I do, you love this game because, my goodness, what a game it was. So, yeah. So, our, I think the four will be Bama. Bama's probably going to be number one because they beat number one, they're going to be number one. Michigan will probably be two. They'll stay two. The problem here is, you know, what what we do we make a rematch? Do we make a Cincinnati, you know, go to three? Do we make Georgia the four? Or do we kick Georgia out in place of either Notre Dame or Baylor? You know, not going to be Ohio State. You know, you can shut that door down. Not going to be Ole Miss. You can shut that door down. Baylor has a conference championship. Georgia's is not. Notre Dame has 11, he has 11 wins. A lot of them just as dominant as Georgia's, but they lost to Cincinnati. Baylor has, again, Baylor has the conference championship, but they have two losses. And that should disqualify Baylor. Notre Dame should be disqualified as well because, you know, again, they lost to the only good team that they played. And Notre Dame has no top 25 wins. So 
you know, it's likely going to be Georgia, but just where did they put Georgia? Did they just flip the spots? I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out Sunday morning, and I'll react to it and everything like that. You know, so we'll see. But with that being said, everybody, that's going to do it. I'll see you all in about 20 to 30 minutes to recap the second round of the FCS playoffs and the SWAC championship. See ya, everybody, in a few.